Surrealism and Fashion, Salvador Dali and Elsa Schiaparelli's collaborations. Surrealism and fashion is a very deep topic that has been an object of research, books and full-on museum exhibitions. A great example of the collaborations of the art movement and fashion was an artistic tandem of Salvador Dali and Elsa Schiaparelli, who created some of the most memorable and influential fashion creations in the fashion history of the 20th century. While I believe Salvador Dali does not require a formal introduction, a recent poll on my Instagram page showed that 40% of the respondents have never heard the name of one and only Elsa Schiaparelli before, so let me introduce her. Elsa Schiaparelli once was the reigning queen of couture. Coming from an aristocratic family in Italy, she opened her fashion business in 1927 in Paris. Between 1927 and 1940, a great scalp, as she was called, created a meteor shower of ideas that revolutionized fashion that we know today. Within her practical innovations that we can't live without today was the wraparound dress that later Diane von Furstenberg recreated in the 70s, shirt weights, jackets, the overall jumpsuit, mix and match separates, the power suit, folding eyeglasses, wedge heel, and even the built-in bra for which she received a patent. She created a newspaper print before Galliano did it for Dior. She played with scarf dresses, colored stockings, paper and plastic clothes. She experimented with different materials. She played with camouflage prints, with crinkled fabric. Her remarkable embroideries inspired Yves Saint Laurent. And before Franco Moschino, Thierry Mugler and even Jean-Paul Gaultier, there was Elsa Schiaparelli. She was an extraordinary character, eccentric and a true visionary. And Salvador Dali, he acknowledged her influence in the Paris avant-garde scene in the 1930s, as well as he recognized the symbolic function of fashion in defining an era. Towards the end of 1930s, Salvador Dali saluted Schiaparelli's workshop as the beating heart of the surrealist Paris. Schiap, as she referred to herself and as her friends tenderly called her, she was not just a designer, but she was a figure in the artistic circles which emerged in the 1910s after the First World War. And she was friends with couturier Paul Poiret, who she considered her mentor, with painter-photographer Man Ray, Jean Cocteau and Pablo Picasso, among others. Yet she met with Salvador Dali only in the early 1930s, and as the biographer Meryl Seacrest says, they must have felt an immediate report. Together, they have produced the first true hybrid of art and fashion. Many writers point out that it's hard to determine who influenced who. Their first collaboration happened in August 1936, when she presented her 1936-1937 collection. Yet it's been noted that a year earlier, some of Salvador Dali's illustrations for American magazines contained several references to Schiaparelli's signature fashion such as hands as buckles, visible zippers, and extremely pointed shoulders. His 1936 painting Night and Day Clothes of the Body features Schiaparelli's clothes. The first collaboration happened when Dali offered his uh, friend a drawing with a caption. Suit with semi-rigid and soft drawers, material imitation stripped chain, drawer pulls in natural oak for Schiaparelli, her friend Salvador Dali, 1936. The drawing resulted in the bureau drawers suit. Made in navy blue velvet, the suit was embellished with five drawers pocket with black plastic knobs. The suits can be seen along with his painting called the Anthropomorphic Cabinet of Dali. The surrealism of the suit was also explicitly emphasized by the photographer Cecil Beaton, who took pictures of the models for the Vogue issue in September 1936, and the models were holding the Minotaur magazine, which was the surrealist magazine featuring Dali's illustrations on its cover, and the model had had drawers and also a lobster. A lobster was another attribute in Dali's artistic vocabulary, and his artwork ended up being one of the most memorable Elsa Schiaparelli's dress, which was known as the lobster dress. Salvador Dali was fascinated by lobsters, 
first because they had their skeleton on top of them, not inside, so thus they were protecting their delicious flesh, but also because he was intrigued by lobster's aphrodisiac qualities, and for him lobster had very erotic associations. It famously appeared on a telephone, which had a plastic lobster on top. The theme was translated by Schiaparelli into a sleeveless evening gown in a white organza with a gently flaring skirt on which a gigantic lobster was placed in the front and sprinkles with some parsley around it. As Meryl Seacrest writes, the idea that someone would want to waltz away the evening in a dress whose main emblem was something to eat seemed preposterous, but in fact someone did. Wallace Simpson chose it in 1936, the year of her marriage to the Duke of Windsor, because she thought her recent photographs made her look hard and she wanted to look more appealing. Cecil Beaton took over a hundred photographs, which would have been a trial, but the results were so successful that Vogue devoted an eight-page spread to the Duchess in 1936. And just a reminder, Wallace Simpson was the American socialite to who Duke of Windsor married and abdicated his throne after being a king of England for only one year, and thus Queen Elizabeth's father became the king and this history changed forever. According to the legends, Salvador Dali wanted to apply a real mayonnaise on the dress, but Schiaparelli refused. It is highly possible that Elsa's own personal childhood stories in their turn inspired Salvador Dali. According to Schiaparelli's biography, Shocking Life, when she was a kid, she was convinced that she was not beautiful. On top of that, she was convinced that she was very ugly. So being a very mischievous child, she thought that to have a face covered with flowers, like a heavenly garden, would indeed be a wonderful thing. And if she could make flowers sprout all over her face, she would be the only woman of her kind in the whole world. Stutriums, daisies, morning glories are all in full bloom. So she convinced the gardener in her house to lend her the seeds of the flowers and she planted them in her nose, in her throat and in her ears. So she thought that the flowers would bloom, she would be so beautiful. It all ended up her starting to suffocate and two doctors, seven attempts, tried to take out all the seeds and thus she luckily survived. And although we don't know if that story really happened or not, yet anyways, it said, it's been said that Salvador Dali must have been inspired by that story, because International Surrealist Exhibition in London happened in 1936. He needed some inventive publicity for this occasion. He had this idea of sending a really pretty girl to the Trafalgar Square in the center of London with her head all covered in flowers to feed pigeons. And it was a sensation. Her images were all over the morning papers, so this idea really worked. The image of a woman where her head is covered in flowers appeared many times in his artworks, including the cover of Vogue magazine in 1939. Another quite daring garment from the artistic collaboration was a tear dress in 1938. It was presented during her famous Circles collection. For some fashion historians, it represented an expression of punk decades before the actual movement was created. And the creation recalls two of Dali's painting. First is called Necrophiliac Springtime of 1936 that was actually in the personal art collection of Elsa Schiaparelli. And the second painting, called The Three Long Surrealistic Women Holding in Their Arms the Skins of an Orchestra. These paintings show women whose bodies and clothes appear melted, so it's impossible to differentiate between their skinned flesh and the ribs of the fabric of their dresses. And the actual dress had prints of the tears drawn by Dali. They made a real great optical illusion. It was very scandalous at the time. The shoe hat united the peak and the base of the human body, launched in Schiaparelli's winter 1937-1938 collection. It makes the culmination of Dali's obsession of the female shoe. Dali emphasized the fetishistic associations of the shoe as a displaced object of desire, placing it in the center stage of his 1931 work called Surrealist Object Functioning Symbolically. 
through 1930s, he was using an object of a shoe in his work, but usually as a stand-in for his wife and muse, Gala. It was her, Gala Dali, who took a picture of her husband, artist, in 1932 in Port Legat while they were vacationing, and he had a shoe on top of his head. And this image from their personal archive inspired the artist to create a shoe head, which looked like an inverted shoe on top of the human body. Only two women were known to wear that hat. It was Gala Dali herself and Schiaparelli's devoted customer, a French socialite and heiress, Daisy Fellows. After being launched with much fanfare by fashion magazines, the shoe hat died a very quiet death and survived only a couple of museum collections. It's been reported that it was not very flattering on a human body, but it made really nice pictures in the profile, as you can see. And there were other head explorations of Salvador Dali and Elsa Schiaparelli, which featured a head in the shape of a lamb chop and also an inkwell but then they quietly gave up the ideas to experiment with more hats. The shoe hat was presented along with the suit, where the jacket had the pockets and lapels were embroidered with shiny red lips, an allusion to the glamour of Hollywood actress Mae West. The Hollywood sex symbol of the time inspired both Salvador Dali and Elsa Schiaparelli in their collaborations and also in their individual work. Salvador Dali created his famous masterpiece called May West Face, which may be used as a surrealist apartment in 1934-1935, and had shaped his famous lip sofa after the lips of this Hollywood actress. And Schiaparelli, she actually had this sofa in her studio, in her boutique on the Place Vendôme. The lip sofa has become very famous and iconic of Salvador Dali's artistic legacy and also an important image of surrealist movement in general. And for Elsa Schiaparelli, she was asked to dress Mae West for her movie Every Day is a Holiday in 1937. And although the actress never came to actual fittings, she sent in her measurements. And her hourglass figure was an inspiration behind Schiaparelli's famous perfume bottle of her debut fragrance, Shocking, in 1937. And she asked the surrealist artist Leonor Fini, who had just immigrated to Paris from Argentina, to create a bottle after the American actress' ultra-feminine silhouette. And it was truly shocking, just like the name of the perfume, and it was a great scandal in 1937 to have a perfume bottle in the shape of a woman's body. During World War II, both Elsa Schiaparelli and Salvador Dali exiled to New York City, and they continued their creative collaborations. The artist created what we now, in modern terms, call branding for her line of cosmetic Shocking Radiance. He created um, illustrations to promote the line of cosmetics, and also the drawings were printed on product labels, packaging and advertisement. He was inspired by Sandro Botticelli, and uh, both of these artists, like Elsa Schiaparelli and Dali, were inspired by this famous Italian artist. His first work, dated by 1946, decorated bottles and the advertising campaigns for the Shocking Radiance line of perfumed oils, which was launched in the United States. And afterwards, the line was expanding and other products were featuring in the line and the art was created exclusively by Salvador Dali for Elsa Schiaparelli. Their final collaboration was a bottle of perfume Leroy Soleil, created in 1946 and it's an homage to Louis XIV, the king's son. It was designed by Salvador Dali and produced in a limited edition of only 2,000 bottles by Baccarat. The stopper was in the shape of the sun, and also the Leroy Soleil echoed a Place Vendôme, the location of Schiaparelli's studio and boutique, because previously there was a statue of this French monarch. The Duchess of Windsor, to whom Elsa gifted the perfume, she wrote to her. Dear Madame Schiaparelli, it is the most beautiful bottle ever made, and the Roy Soleil is a very lasting and sweet gentleman. It has displaced the Duke's photograph on the quarters. So these were their final artistic collaborations, and after the Second World War, the Paris has changed. It was a new world. The surrealism as the main artistic movement and creative force of Paris faded away. 
thus the inspiration for Altaskia Pareles as well. The sales started going down and she had to close her business. House of Schiaparelli closed almost at the same time as the, her main lifelong rival Coco Chanel reopened hers in 1954. The success of Schiaparelli Dali's collaborations had been credited to Schiaparelli's ability to transform really bizarre ideas in something very wearable and flattering. The topic of Elsa's complete influence on the surrealism is yet to be fully researched, as previously she hasn't been given enough credit on her own influence to the surrealist movement. Uh, but now uh, more and more exhibitions are coming out to celebrate her legacy and also her influence. In 2017, the first ever exhibition devoted to Salvador Dali and Elsa Schiaparelli's collaborative history opened at the Dali Museum in St. Petersburg in Florida. It's called Dali and Schiaparelli. It was the first retrospective to explore the cross-media relationship between the two, pairing works inspired in a parallel timeline and their mutual works. And currently, today, in Paris, uh, there is an exhibition called Shocking. The surreal world of Elsa Schiaparelli is on the view in the Museo de Arts Decoratif and it's on until January 22, 2023. Ten years ago, the house of Schiaparelli was resurrected, and today it is led by a Texan-born designer, Daniel Raspberry, who uh, famously dressed Lady Gaga for the President Biden's inauguration, and he customly made creations for Beyoncé for her Grammy Awards. He interprets uh, Elsa's artistic legacy in a very artistic and groundbreaking way. But that's another story. This was Darina Granik and Darina Granik Culture Club. Follow this page and stay tuned. See you soon.